Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about the series that I plan to start in 2021. They are a bunch of series that I'm already in the middle of and that really should prevent me from starting any more series, but uh, yeah. Still planning to start a bunch of new series. <laughs> just because a series is not on this list does not mean I won't necessarily pick it up in 2021. It just means that I'm not actively currently planning to prioritize starting it in 2021, but things can change very quickly as we all learned in 2020. <laughs> uh, these are in no particular order. They're just the order that I wrote them down in. So it's not like top priority, it's the lowest priority or anything like that. It's just, it's just a list. So first on my list is The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan, which is one of those series that like fantasy lovers, fantasy readers, knowers of fantasy things have at the very least heard of, but most likely read. I have not. My brother actually read these in high school. I don't think he read all of The Wheel of Time, but he read quite a few and he's trying to get me to read them when I was in high school. I didn't because it didn't appeal to me at the time. I think my dad's read most, if not all of the books in The Wheel of Time. I have several friends that love The Wheel of Time. It is this classic fantasy or newer classic fantasy. It's just one of those, it's one of those series. <laughs> so I feel like it's about time that I give it a go. I've got the, fish, the first book, The Eye of the World. I did technically read a few pages of The Eye of the World in high school when my brother was trying to get me to read it, but I read maybe a chapter or two. <laughs> I was not the right person or the right mood or the right place or the right time for it. So I'm going in with low expectations, but high enthusiasm, if that makes sense. So I'm trying to keep expectations low because I want to give it a chance. And I've heard even fans of it criticize it and say that like, you have to really read a few books before you really get into it, which like, okie doke, <laughs> I'm really still in it. I've heard people talk about like, this lag in the middle of the series. It's quite a long series. So I'm just going in with like very, very middle expectations, very just like, okay, let's just see what this is about. I'm not expecting it to blow me away. I'm not expecting to hate it. I'm just like, let's see what it is. Next up, I have Malazan, uh, Book of the Fallen by Steve Erickson, Steven Erickson. I did also technically start reading the first book in this series years ago. I had just sort of started getting back into reading and I had gotten a few mass market paperbacks from Amazon that were just sort of recommended to me by the algorithm. So I got Gardens of the Moon and I had it with me when I went to go buy my first car. <laughs> and they it took a really long time like fixing up the car because it was a CarMax. So they always do like a check and like uh, whatever they do like an inspection type thing and it took way longer than usual so i was in the waiting room for a couple hours trying to maybe read gardens of the moon <laughs> it was not really working for me because i was at carmax <laughs> um and i've never really tried it since i have heard that it is notoriously difficult to get into and that it is kind of this complicated not character or plot driven bizarre type thing i'm a very different person than i was then I'm not presently in the CarMax waiting room. So I'm giving it another go. Next up, I have The Dresden Files by, who even is that by? I feel like I should know. Jim Butcher. The moment I saw that name, I was like, oh, you stupid idiot. Uh, this is again a series that I feel like a lot of people have read and, and love as quite the cult following. I honestly like, <laughs> I first heard of the show The Dresden Files that I think is based on those books. And I didn't know there were books. So the first time I heard someone say they like The Dresden Files, I was like, oh, are those like books based on that TV show? <laughs> kind of like how people think that Witcher books are based on the game. So like, I just was like, wasn't that that one random thing that there was like a bad TV show for? Uh. But I've since then become more aware of and familiar with the fact that these are a series of books that people quite like. And it's urban fantasy with sort of like private investigator wizard thing. I think there's like a approximately 1 million books out in the series so far. Uh, from what I hear, this sort of, there is an overarching plot, but they are also very much like the crime of the week type thing. And I'm a sucker for those type of TV shows. I love watching things like Bones and um, Psych and I, just, I, don't know, I like crime of the week type shows and having like quick reads that are each, oh, I, I loved Nancy Drew. I read like nothing but Nancy Drew when I was a kid. So I like fantasy. I like crime of the week and people seem to like these. So I'm going to give them a go. Next, uh, The Book of the New Sun by Jean Wolfe. First book is Shadow and Claw. This is a like sci-fi fantasy series. And I do mean like, or like science fantasy, I guess that's what that's called. I don't know that they had all those categories when it was written, it's older. I picked it up kind of randomly because the synopsis sounded really cool. And I didn't, much like a lot of the books that I've read that turned out to be iconic, well-known, well-regarded, much revered works that I had no idea when I picked them up. It's one of those, kind of like how I randomly picked up Neo the Wind <laughs> and then was like, oh, this is like a thing. So I randomly picked up the first book, Shadow and Claw, because the cover caught my eye, the synopsis sounded interesting. I was like, this this sounds up my alley. And then 
Pierce Brown really highly recommended it after that. And I was like, oh, I've got that book. And then I've like, I've seen more like it discussed, I guess, uh, as being one of those like incredibly well regarded type books and series that have been like really influential. So I've got it. Pierce Brown likes it. And uh, I'm gonna try reading it. Next up is Lock and Key by Joe Hill. I had intended actually to, and I did technically very barely start it during Halloween month, but also known as October. This is a series of graphic novels, comics, thingies, picture books. <laughs> I watched the adaptation of Black and Key on Netflix and I really loved it. And my friend is trying to get me to read more graphic novels. She's always trying to get me to read more graphic novels. And there is an audible adaptation of it. So much like with Sandman, that's sort of my goal, plan, approach, intention to to read along while I listen. I did start doing that, um, but my allergies were really bad and I couldn't look at it when I started. And then I didn't have time the rest of the month because I had like fucking one billion books on my TBR in October. Um, but Audible Plus, the new, is it all at Audible Plus? The new audible thing where there's like a selection of audiobooks for free if you're part of it like kindle unlimited the audiobook of lock and key is available at least right now maybe that'll change so i really need to hurry up but that's my plan to listen and read along and next up i have dark tower by stephen king this is i originally intended to start my stephen king journey with dark tower because I was like, well, I'm mainly a fantasy reader and he has written an epic fantasy series, so it would make the most sense to start there. Except I was then told by a bunch of people, no, <laughs> don't start with Dark Tower. So all those people told me to start with Pet Cemetery instead. And I did start with Pet Cemetery, and I liked Pet Cemetery. And since then I read Eye of the Eyes of the Dragon by Stephen King, which is which is a fantasy. Really enjoyed it. And I think I'm finally ready now to start my Dark Tower journey. I own the first two books in the Dark Tower. Uh, a friend of mine gave them to me because she wants me to read more Stephen King. It's about time I find out what I think of that iconic series. Next up, I have The Dark Artifices by Cassandra Clare. I have been intending to read this series for a million years and I have some really cool editions of it. And I feel like I need to read The Dark Artifices before I read the new series that is a sequel to the, the Infernal Devices, but still a prequel to the Mortal Instruments and a pre-prequel to the Dark Artifices. And the Cassandra Clare series situation is intense. I've given up on the Mortal Instruments as a thing that I will never read because I just can't deal with it. Universally, I've pretty much heard people say people who did not previously like Cassandra Clare, the Dark Artifices is genuinely really good. So I plan to read the Dark Artifices and then read, the, is it called the, what is the new series? The Gilded Hour? Is that? No, I feel like that's the name of a historical fiction book. The Glittering Hour? The Glittering Hour. Well, Chain of Gold is the first book in the series. Anyway, so yeah, I want to read The Dark Artifices because everyone seems to agree that they're great. And mainly I really, really want to read the new one, which is the historical fiction-y type one because I really liked The Infernal Devices. And I want more of Jem. Jem Carstairs is my baby. Next up is Fireborn by whoever the fuck that's by. I got it from Book of the Month ages and ages ago. I thought it was a standalone actually recently have become aware that it is not a standalone and they changed the covers and I don't like the new covers so that's deeply upsetting but the series is called I don't know what the series is called but the author which is actually what I was googling is Rosaria Munda yeah I've heard pretty great things about it I've heard that it's very character driven a unique take on the whole dragon thing and I've pretty much heard great things about it from everyone that's picked it up and from people that I trust I already own it I've owned it since I got it from book of the month and I need to really fucking read it yeah I just yeah yep <laughs> Next is Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. I intend to finish the Farseer trilogy, which I'm loving, and intend to dive right into the Mad Ship. Perhaps, depending on how things go, I might be able to read other Robin Hobb series as well next year, but the one that I plan to start as soon as I'm done with Farseer is Mad Ship, which I believe is also the one you're supposed to read after Mad Ship, I think that's the order of things. I love, love, love Farseer so far. Um, so I fully in expect to continue to love it and to want to read more Hob when I'm done. I've heard nothing but exceptional things about Mad Ship. I've heard a lot of people say that they like it better than Farseer, which man, like if it's better than Farseer, like, <laughs> wow. I believe the sort of concept behind those books is that the sort of magical type of wood is used to build these ships, which gives the ships kind of personality and sentience. I feel like if it if it wasn't Robin Hobb, if I heard someone else was writing this, I'd be like, that sounds dumb. But it's Robin Hobb. And I've seen now how subtly she writes characters that I feel like if there's anybody that could pull off sentient ships, <laughs> it's Robin Hobb. So I'm excited. Next up is The Black Company by Glenn Cook. This actually is also another series that I did technically start reading like a chapter of. <laughs> way like years ago I also got like a bunch of mass market paperbacks as I said from Amazon 
And this one I started reading one day on my commute to work when I was taking the bus back then and uh, read like a chapter and was like, eh. And then just, I didn't, back in the day, DNF wasn't part of my vocabulary. So I just was like, eh, I don't feel like reading that right now. And then never picked it up again. And I think I may have gotten rid of it or given it away or something. I definitely don't own it anymore. So yeah, now that I kind of know more what it is, know myself more as a reader, know what I'm getting into. It's not just some random thing I picked up and I was like, eh, I want to give it a go. Plus I've fallen like harder and harder for Grimdark as the years go on. And I become one with my spirit animal, Sandanglacta. <laughs> so I think it would appear, appeal to me more now than I did, than, I, than it was ever going to at that point in my life. And last but not least is the Book of Babel by... <sighs> Why don't I ever look up author names before I film videos? I just, I don't understand what's wrong with me. Josiah Bancroft. I've, I pre-ordered Senlin Ascends when it came, was coming out and I haven't read it yet. And since then, I think like four more books in the series have come out. Maybe not four, but more books have come out. I think if it's not already a completed series, it's about to be. I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. And I was expecting to like it. That's why I pre-ordered it. And I intended to read it shortly after it came out and just never got around to it. And... I really, really want to read it. And I do expect to love that. It sounds so like my jam. Like the sort of character-driven lit -y style of fantasy with a completely unique premise. It sounds amazing. And I'm really excited for that. So let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the series that I am planning to start. If you're also planning to start any of these series. If you would recommend that I don't read these series. Or if you're excited for me to experience these series. Whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays. Other random times as well. But definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe. And I'll see you when I see you.